First he was out, then he was in. The number one recruit in the country, James Wiseman, will be in uniform and in the starting lineup for number 14 Memphis as they take on UIC. And you are watching the American Conference on ESPN. And we are so glad to have you with us here at FedEx Forum. Now, the madness is supposed to arrive in March, but there has been plenty of madness here in November and off the court here in Memphis today. Ted Emmerich, along with former Purdue star Robbie Hummel, James Wiseman ruled ineligible by the NCAA about an hour ago because they say that his coach, Penny Hardaway, paid for his move from Nashville to Memphis two years ago when he was still in high school. 40 minutes ago, about 20 minutes later, Wiseman ruled eligible because of a temporary restraining order from a local judge. What a wild, chaotic scene it's been today. The most surreal scene that, that I have ever seen in a college sporting event. I think we saw James Eisman, Wiseman ruled ineligible only 37 minutes later. All of a sudden now he's going to play and ends up starting the game. Just something that you don't see in college athletics. And what a strange day for this team. What a strange day for the city of Memphis and an even stranger day for the NCAA, Ted. There have been a few fist pumps from Memphis staffers when that news came down about 40 minutes ago that yes, Wiseman, by the way, after making his college debut on Tuesday, when he dropped 28 points and 11 rebounds in a blowout win over South Carolina State, would actually be able to play. There's a lot more to come with this story, but here's what we know, he's playing tonight. We will at least see him for the next 40 minutes, but really a transcendent player for this program and a guy that legitimized their recruiting class. You're looking at the number one player in the country, a guy that's been compared to David Robinson. You see the athleticism, you see the skill set. There were guys in this recruiting class that came to Memphis because he gave them legitimacy. He is the cornerstone of what is overall the number one recruiting class in the country. And Lester Quinones is another member of that stellar freshman class. He hits the three to start. We fully expected UIC to come out in zone, and that's what they saw right there. Lester Quinones, one of the best shooters in his high school class, showing off the range right there. That was his first three of his brief college career. He was 0 for 3 in the season opener Tuesday night. UIC from the Horizon League opened with a win, a close win over NAIA school Olivet Nazarene on Tuesday. They are without four starters tonight because of injury and suspension. Damian Vaughn, Boogie Ellis connects with the long range three, this time for Memphis, and it's six to nothing just like that. That can't be the start Steve McLean wanted to see. Two perimeter jump shots going down for Memphis. Also, the referees missed the goaltending on this end right here. UIC should have gotten a bucket. But this is the end where, where Memphis can be scary. You know, you look at the length, you look at the rim protection between James Wiseman and Precious Achua. You got the guys on the perimeter, you have the length at the rim. Really an opportunity for Penny Hardaway's ball club to be scary come March. I mean, think about this, Robbie. James Wiseman and Penny Hardaway were in a courtroom here in Memphis between shoot around early this afternoon and the game which started here at six o'clock local time what is that like first of all from an 18 year old's perspective as we take a look at penny <laughs> well most 18 year olds are going to pregame meal and then maybe going back and taking a nap but as i said to start the game I i've never seen anything like this and I i'm not sure anyone that's been around this sport has seen anything like this either you look at what went down today he was ineligible now an injunction rules he can play now he's starting and now you see him at half court playing for Memphis tonight. Tigers turn it over here. Wiseman, the projected number one pick in the 2020 NBA draft, a little over seven months from now. You just look at the day as a whole for the NCAA. You, you have the Chase Young situation at Ohio State. He's suspended indefinitely for taking a loan from a friend that he paid back. Now you have James Wiseman, the projected number one pick in next year's NBA draft. And okay, yes, Penny Hardaway allegedly gave his parents money to move as his high school coach, but you don't know that he's gonna be the coach of Memphis one day. Like right. that's not like he looked into a crystal ball and said, hey, you know, let me develop this relationship so I can get him when I go to be the coach at Memphis. It's just, it's a total joke. It's a total joke that in this day and age where we have guys that are allegedly gonna start getting paid for their likeness, now you have the two best players in your respective sports 
not playing. That it is just, it's a joke, and something needs to change, and it needs to change quickly. That sure what misses the floater for Memphis. Yeah, guilty until proven innocent, well, right? From a player's perspective, here. for the coaches, yes, yeah. we have guys coaching in our game right. that have been on wiretap, yeah, doing things that are blatantly against the rules. However, rumor comes out, and it's been investigated a little bit. Not not a rumor, but word comes out that James Wiseman is given money to move as a high school kid, which he doesn't have any control over. That's his parents. And all of a sudden, immediately ineligible. It, it is not right. It's completely wrong. And, and like I just said, it needs to change, and it needs to change right now. First points of the game for UIC, the three-pointer by Dion Edgem, the younger brother of former Iowa State star Melvin Edgem, former Big 12 Player of the Year in 2014. He can step out and shoot that. An undersized big, especially in this game, where you have a two and Wiseman roaming that paint, but he can take him outside. He can knock down shots from the perimeter. Boogie Ellis has his second three. It has been everything from the outside for Memphis here in the first three minutes. I see continuing to pack that zone, and we'll see if Memphis is going to shoot like this. There's no way Steve McClain can stay in it. A nightmare start for the UIC defense. Offensive rebound, new rule in college basketball. Shot clock resetting to 20 on the offensive board. Bridges blocked inside. James Wiseman, he can make such an impact on the interior. Ellis connects again. His third three, forcing the timeout by UIC. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. A hot start. Wiseman on the court after all. Memphis has four threes in the early going, up 12 to three over UIC, and the reinstated James Wiseman with the big defensive play to start this. You see just what James Wiseman can be at this level and at the next level, right there, showing his ability to alter shots in the paint. And right now, Boogie Ellis has been absolutely on fire. Nine points, three of three from the field. It's a nightmare start for Steve McClain's zone defense. Ellis was just one for four from deep in his debut Tuesday night. Jamie Ahale from Australia trying to save it right in front of us. It's out to Memphis. And some more context, by the way, for Wiseman. Again, to catch you up, ruled ineligible about an hour and a half ago, then reinstated with a temporary restraining order by a judge in Shelby County here in Memphis. When he moved from Nashville to Memphis, that was before his junior year of high school. Memphis East High School was his new school. That's where Penny Hardaway was the head coach. The allegation is that Penny helped pay for moving expenses, numbering in the thousands of dollars for Wiseman's family. Wiseman had no idea that was happening, according to the University of Memphis in a statement they released today. And again, Penny was not the head coach at Memphis at the time. He was the coach at East High School. Well, it's just such a double standard. I mean, if, if James Wiseman was an elite pianist, and he was a great piano player, and there was a piano teacher that wanted to move him closer so that he could tutor him and, and make his life better, it would be fine. You know, Penny Hardaway in that case would be looked at as a great mentor. Scene for Penny Hardaway and Memphis. James Wiseman, the number one recruit in the country, ruled ineligible about an hour and a half ago. Temporary restraining order has Wiseman on the court tonight against UIC. And Robbie Wiseman, the best recruit in school history. Check out some of the other top five recruits in the ESPN rankings era. Yeah, you know Evans and Rose. Well, just like Derrick Rose and also Tyree Devin, James Wiseman, a game changer as a player coming to play in Memphis, Tennessee. Just a guy that you, you don't get the chance to recruit a lot of times at a school if you're not Duke, you're not North Carolina, you're not Kentucky. Or the, the sway that Penny Hardaway has and, and did have as his high school coach. You know, built that relationship and just a game-changing player. Brought, you see all these other, you see Precious Achua right there. The reason that he's here is because James Wiseman gave this class legitimacy. Achua made his decision in May, along with a couple of others in this recruiting class. Look at Achua Boogie Ellis, picking, another absolutely. guy. Achua picking Memphis over North Carolina and Kansas. He's the other McDonald's All-American in this class with Wiseman. You think about what 
those two can do together. There, there is so much potential. He pressures Achua built in such a way where he can just get to the rim at will. Really built like almost a Rudy Gay, a guy that projects to play on the wing at the next level. We'll play the four here for Penny Hardaway, but you see the class right there, loaded with talent. A guy like Lester Quinones, one of the best shooters in this class, a specialist. So you get a little bit of everything at the guard position and in the front court. Yeah, it's an outstanding class even without Wiseman. But Wiseman caps it off, and Achua caps that lob with a dunk. Wiseman getting an early breather. We talked to Penny Hardaway today at shoot around. He said, I, I want Precious Achua to be a guy that is a dominant two-way player. You've seen what he can do physically. The skill set's still coming along, but you see the body and you see his potential. You mentioned David Robinson. That's a comparison that Paul and Cardi, ESPN's national director of recruiting, for basketball uh, has brought up over the last year. Also, Sam that, that's Perkins for James, that's for James, for James Wiseman. Wiseman, yes. Wiseman, a guy, that lefty stroke, he, he doesn't shoot it as well yet in terms of the, from going out to the perimeter. But you, you think of a guy like Chris Bosh, a guy that at his size could really spread the floor, also take you inside. But I think the way that James Wiseman runs is just so impressive to see at seven foot one. Hard spill by Achua. And it's an offensive foul on the freshman. Originally from Nigeria. Moved to the U.S. when he was 13 years old. Well, that would be the part of his game that needs to, to make strides and come along. That's his basketball IQ, his decision-making. Still very raw. You see his body right there. You see the raw potential that Precious Achua has. You look down the road five, six, seven years from now. He's going to be a force playing at the next level. It is a 10-0 run for Memphis. UIC hasn't scored in the last three and a half minutes. They're one for nine from the floor. Uh, open look, but stepping out of bounds is Brian Taylor. And that's something a lot of coaches are harping on, Robbie. The extended three-point line now in the corners. There's less space. Well, you see it a lot in the NBA with rookies because they're so used to that college three-point line where you can really step in. Well, now with the three-point line being extended here in the college game, you're going to see a ton of guys with their heels on that sideline. That's exactly what we saw there. A nice pass from Jacob Wiley, a guy that can really score out of the post for UIC. Alex Lomax had a shot rejected by Braylon Bridges, the junior college transfer. Michael Diggins finding Bridges inside, could not score it over the Louisville transfer, Lance Thomas. How many teams in the country can say Lance Thomas is our third big yeah. coming off the bench? <laughs> right? And oh, by the way, number zero in gray, DJ Jeffries, a five-star freshman and coming off, off the bench, bench too. Exactly. Well, how many five-star freshmen are okay with coming off the bench? We talked to Penny today, and he said he's fully bought in. He, he is on the same page. Whatever the team needs, a guy that can stat, stuff the stat sheet and do it in a hurry, and play the one through four, going to get himself a dunk right here. How about an and one off the feed from Thomas? on the interior of this zone. DJ Jeffries with a great cut, really good pass from Lance Thomas. I think it's important to, to point out, though, U, UIC is incredibly undermanned tonight. You know, they're missing three of their best players. You got Marcus Adi, guy who's preseason second team, all Horizon League. He's out with an injury. You got Tarkus Ferguson who led the team in points, rebounds, assists, steals, every, every major statistical category he led this team in last year. He's out for a violation of team rules. Rob Howard got hurt in the offseason, got a shoulder injury. So there's a lot of guys that are not playing for Steve McClain's ball club tonight. Bridges the hook, doesn't drop. Got his own miss, and Bridges will head to the line. He's a guy that... Steve McClain really likes. He thinks he's got a chance to be one of the better bigs in the Horizon League. Still young, just a sophomore, but great size. A nice left jump hook, and right there staying with it, going up against Memphis' size. 
Tom McLean said it to us uh, earlier today. When I scheduled this game against Memphis, I didn't think I'd come in without four starters. Right. But I told the guys last night, this is where you want to be in March. This is a team that's expected to contend in the Horizon League, an experienced group. And so this is where you want to be. You want to be in an NBA arena in March. You want to play a team like Memphis in the first round of the NCAA tournament. So let's grow and learn from this. Well, he's excited about building depth because you're going to get those two guards back, Marcus Adi and Tarkus Ferguson. They also hope to get Jordan Blount back for his ACL last season. Hope to get him back about January, and you have to think these games pay dividends for UIC because you have these young guys that are getting minutes and getting reps against teams like Memphis. Bridges couldn't hit at the line. The scoring drought is now over five minutes for UIC. Come up with a steal. Thomas knocks it out of bounds. It'll stay with the Flames. Lance Thomas sat out last year after transferring from Louisville. Averaged just over two points a game as a freshman with the Cardinals. He had four points and four rebounds in his Memphis debut Tuesday night. Jacob Wiley knocks down the three for UIC, the junior from Houston. Those are the kind of possessions that Steve McClain wants to see. Get a paint touch with the dribble drive and find your shooter. UIC finally settling into this game. Godwin Bowen is the offensive catalyst with Ferguson and Adi sitting tonight, but he couldn't lay it in. Quinones already drilled one three. That one doesn't drop. Memphis got off to the hot start. They knocked down a couple early perimeter jump shots, and now seems I, I wouldn't say they're settling because they are open shots UIC not a team that hardly ever plays zone so it looks like at times they're confused with what they're doing which sometimes can be hard to play against you know you look at a team that's playing defense where all of a sudden you're wide open after one pass you start like right missing, here it can be hazardous to your health now if you're making them it's great that's part of Jeffrey's game like you said do it all player can also defend positions one through four at the other end he has an NBA body right now. You can see why he was a five-star recruit ranked to the top 25. Godwin Bowen has to have a big offensive night for UIC just to hang around. Diggins saved it for UIC. Here's Bowen splitting two defenders for the bucket. Godwin Bowen was the sixth man of the year in the Horizon League two years ago and started every game last year. And a monster game in their opener against Olivet Nazarene at 21 points, 19 of those coming in the second half. And have the three-point play that bailed him out. We're this close to losing to an NAIA team in the opener. Much different challenge tonight against Penny Hardaway's Memphis Tigers. Beale Street on a Friday night here in Memphis. Well, there's certainly been a buzz on Beale Street. The Memphis Tigers men's basketball team coming into the year. Ranked number 14 in the preseason. And a newsworthy afternoon involving this 18-year-old James Wiseman, who was initially ruled ineligible by the NCAA earlier today. Here's the statement from Memphis about an hour ago. That James Wiseman was going to be withheld from competition based on a rule interpretation from the NCAA. However, thanks to an emergency temporary restraining order issued by the courts here in Memphis, James participating here tonight, he was in the starting lineup. Got a nice breather of about four to five minutes. Blocked a shot that led to a three. This case is far from over, Robbie, but for now, Wiseman is on the floor with his teammates. We talked about it earlier, just a surreal afternoon. About the time of shoot around on to game time. James Wiseman, the guy that by many is thought of as the number one pick in next year's NBA draft. A talent that physically and skill-wise is second to none. And right on cue, 
showing his ability to protect the paint and protect the rim. Just gave a Memphis fan a souvenir in the first row. Chance to get the ball back, though, unfortunately. Deion Ejik thinks he's got an easy little right jump hook, and on most nights in the Horizon League, yes, you do. But against James Wiseman in Memphis, <laughs> not here. Wiseman's second block. Jamie Ahale, known as a shooter. Offensive rebound again. Shot clock resetting to 20 seconds this year on the offensive board. Ellis with the steal for Memphis. Wiseman, a post touch. And he's got his first bucket tonight. That's the skill set right there. Takes his time, gives you a little up and under head fake, gets to his jump shot. A very skilled seven foot one center. They call him Big Ticket. I'm not sure. That nickname's taken, yeah, in my opinion, right. but man, he is worth the price of admission. Wiseman now in transition, lost his balance, and he traveled. Take a look at the footwork right here. The wise decision by Lester Quinones to throw the ball in the post, and he is not just a dunker and a runner. He has got a skill set right there. You see, taking contact, getting to that little fadeaway jumper. Pretty left-hand stroke. Also has a jump hook over the right shoulder. That's a big part of his arsenal. And is trying to extend his range. Always been a good free throw shooter in high school now the last two years. And a lot of scouts think that maybe eventually he can develop the three-pointer. He hasn't made it at a high clip yet. But when you look at him and the way he shoots the basketball, you can tell that the form and the mechanics are there. It's just repetition. He's still an 18 or 19-year-old kid. But so advanced compared to most bigs his age. Achua trying his hand at a three. Wiseman secures the offensive rebound, and he's fouled. He's just a different breed down low, and a guy that you don't see that profile in today's game, well, right? It's the, the mixture of athleticism and skill. And I think with a lot of guys, you, you think about it, DeAndre Jordan, he's built like that. He's an athlete like James Wiseman, but he doesn't have the skill set. Now, he's a better free throw shooter Today, DeAndre Jordan is. He's really worked at it, but James Wiseman's got a pretty good looking jump shot. He's got post moves. You can throw him the ball on the block and ask him to get a bucket, and he can at least get to a, a solid post up play. A little more on James Wiseman. Did you know that he speaks Mandarin? He took that class starting when he was at the Endsworth School in Nashville. By the way, it's very interesting to hear him. It's just about fluent. You mentioned the nickname Robbie, the big ticket. We got to work on that, right? That, that's Kevin Garnett's I, I nickname. Just, it's hard to to go with a nickname where somebody's already taken. I, I just I feel like we can do better. Yeah. Well, Sunday at one Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN check out an early battle between Florida State and number six Florida. By the way, Florida's getting a lot of buzz here in the preseason. Gary Blackshear, the transfer from Virginia Tech, had 20 points and 10 rebounds in his debut with the Gators the other night. Achua lost it for a moment, able to gather it, but he stepped out. And we will step aside. A 13-point lead for Memphis here at home. Penny Hardaway and his staff certainly glad to have number 32 in the huddle and on the floor tonight after the drama from earlier today, initially ruled ineligible by the NCAA. But on the floor now, because of a temporary restraining order, he makes an impact at both ends. Well, it is at both ends, and you see his ability to block shots and patrol the paint, but here's what he's shown off that has NBA scouts salivating, the ability to score the ball in the paint on skilled plays. You see the jump shot right there. You see the footwork. There are so many things going right for this young man. You have to think, what's going through his mind on a day where you were at shoot-around, all of a sudden, hey, you got to go. And an hour before the game, you find yourself in a Memphis courtroom. That is soap opera-esque. Again, the impermissible benefits were the fact that Petty Hardaway allegedly 
paid for his family's moving expenses from Nashville to Memphis two years ago, going into Wiseman's junior year of high school as Wiseman rips down another rebound. Hardaway was the coach at East High School where Wiseman finished up. And Boogie Ellis has his fourth three of the first half. He's got the NBA jam, Nets on fire right now. The way he's shooting the basketball, really stroking it with a lot of confidence. A former Duke commitment, showing what he does best. That's scoring that rock. Travell Washington chases down the offensive rebound. Bowen with an open look. Bowen blocked by Wiseman. That's his fourth rejection already. And Alan Bowen just kind of shrugging his shoulders like, what am I supposed to do? Thinks he's by him with that nice little crossover dribble, but access denied. James Wiseman just showing how good he can be at defending the rim. Preseason AP All-American and the only freshman on that squad, James Wiseman. Offensively, he hasn't been the statistical force that he was on opening night against South Carolina State, but you were able to tune in and watch that with the way he ran the floor and the way he affected the game on both ends. It was major league. I mean, you could see just why everybody says he is going to be the number one pick in next year's NBA draft. Diggins had the dunk at the other end for UIC. Ellis, give him five. Yes, you bet. Five three-pointers for Boogie. Drive by Lester Quinones makes that play. A great baseline drive and a terrific one-hand pass. Hits Boogie Ellis right in the shooting pocket. Who's locked and loaded and on fire right now. Lomax knocked it out of Bowen's hands, out of bounds. It'll stay with UIC. Boogie Ellis, you mentioned Robbie decommitting from Duke earlier this year and ending up at the Tigers. Diggins trying to post up against Ellis, and he lost it out of bounds to Memphis. And a really nice job there by Boogie Ellis of knowing the scouting report. And Penny Hardaway and Mike Miller walked their team through that play. And they said, we're going to switch this. We're not giving up a lob right there. Boogie Ellis doing just that and then staying down on the bigger offensive player, forcing a turnover. Lester Quinones trains a three. That's eight threes in the first half for Memphis. We're talking to shoot around today. We were saying, hey, if we're Steve McClain, I love the game plan. Pack it in, make Memphis prove that they can beat you from the three-point line. But unfortunately for UIC, that has not been a terrific plan. It always helps when you make your first one. And that's exactly what Memphis did, playing with a ton of confidence on the offensive end right now. Check out James Wiseman trying to handle in transition. He will do that on occasion had it knocked out of his hands. I think Mike Miller, who is on Penny Hardaway's staff, really appreciates the shooting exhibition so far. He's probably a big part of it. Look at Mike Miller, one of the best shooters in NBA history. He made 1,500 threes. The definition right there of a professional shooter. And that's probably selling short because early on in his career, he was an outstanding player in the NBA. 24 of Memphis's 33 points have come from outside the arc. Eight threes. And Miller had that giant NBA championship ring. ring. That's right. Earlier today at shoot around, you shake his hand. You're going to have to warp your fingers to, <laughs> to shake it. You can almost go blind. That thing has more diamonds <laughs> in it than you can even imagine. But think about being a college kid and having him work on you with your jump shot. I mean, what an advantage. You got Penny, Har Penny Hardaway was telling us today about, we were talking about throwing the ball in the post and how it's kind of a lost art in college basketball. And he said it's, it's really a lost art in the pros too. And he said something they work on every day. And he mentioned, you know, I threw the ball in the shack. You should throw the ball into to our guys. Throw it into Precious. Throw it into James. He's got guys that are like that at the college level. He said Wiseman and Precious can be a guard's best friend when you're in trouble. Foul is called with six on the timer. That'll be on Lomax. Now James Wiseman picked Memphis over Kentucky 
He said, I wanted to be that game-changing recruit for the Memphis program. Penny Hardaway has been a mentor of mine for many years, and that's what won out. It's impressive. Yes, I get it. A lot of people can say, well, Hardaway coached him in high school for a year. Yes, that is true. But still, for Penny Hardaway in Memphis to beat out John Calipari in Kentucky for Wiseman says a lot. Well, I think it speaks to his reputation in this state and in this city. You know, he was an iconic player in the 90s. He had his own commercials. He was in blue chips. He, he really did a lot outside of basketball. All these kids, they didn't see that. They see it on Instagram and they, they see it on Twitter. They, they see the kind of cultural impact he had on the game. And that's not just, the, that doesn't even count his basketball coaching ability, which I think he's done a very good job at here. Took a team last year, mostly Tubby Smith's players, right? 22 wins and the second round at the NIT. It was their first postseason appearance of any kind in five years. He talked at shoot around today about the things that they need to do to get better and it's communication. And, and if you've seen the first half of this game, they've had some miscommunications, some breakdowns in talking where they've had two guys switching onto one player. This is still a very young team. This is freshmen and sophomores in college learning how to play the game together. Just look at their ceiling. Their ceiling is so high. Is it national championship? Is that the That's ceiling? That's aggressive. Like, I'm yeah. not sure the ceiling is national championship. You look at the teams that have started five freshmen, and it's not very many that have been able to accomplish that level of success. Do I think they can win the American? Absolutely. Do I think they can be a second weekend team in the NCAA tournament if they are eligible and healthy? Yes, I do. I think that they have that kind of talent. But they're going to have to really gel, and they're going to have to figure some things out as they play youth, which is not always easy. Plenty of banners here at FedEx Forum to remind Memphis what the goal is. Jeffries, the drive and kick. How about the ball movement? And Lomax buries the three from the corner. Giving up a good shot to get a great one. And that's exactly what Tyler Harris did right there. He had a pretty good look. It was definitely deep from the three-point line, but you get a wide-open corner three. That's the shot that college coaches and NBA coaches want you to see taken. But an impressive possession right here by the Memphis Tigers. Everything going their way right now. You talk about the ball movement. How about Alex Lomax getting involved? They saw everything falling for the Tigers here in Memphis. Eleven zero run for Memphis. They're up 38-13 over UIC here in the Bluff City. Well, we mentioned Memphis, just the fourth high major team in history to predominantly start five freshmen. Teams to reach the Sweet 16, well, the previous three did it. Starting five freshmen, the Fab Five of Michigan, 91-92. Kentucky, the 13-14 season, 11 losses on the year, but they played for a national championship, losing to UConn. Then, a couple of years ago, 2017-2018, Kentucky as well made it to the Sweet 16. So, again, you think Memphis could very well be a second weekend team in the NCAA tournament? I, I do. I, I think you look at their talent, you look at their upside, and you have to think they can be a team that is terrifying to play on a short scout just because of the athleticism they bring and what they can do offensively and defensively. They, they have so much talent. One of those deals where you don't have a week to prepare. How are you going to guard James Wise and how are you going to defend Precious Achua? You have to do it on a, a short time frame, and it's not an easy thing to do for coaches. Five to shoot for Michael Diggins, fading against Jeffries. He hits. Well, yes, Penny Hardaway, about uh, second weekend. He's thinking a little more than that. He told The Athletic about a month ago, when I look at this group, I just say to myself, we're going to win a national championship. Well, he's the coach. He should say that. Yeah. I mean, what coach is not <laughs> saying that? Right. Oh, Boogie Ellis is feeling it. His sixth three-pointer of the first half. It just looks so easy for Boogie Ellis right now. The way he's shooting the basketball with range with such ease. It's a sight to behold right now. A guy is on fire here. Foul on Alex Lomax here. Ellis originally committed to Duke. He switched late in the spring to Memphis. See just a little skip pass. UIC still in that zone defense and distance not a factor for Boogie Ellis right now. He's feeling it. It's one of those things where if you're Damian Vaugh, you're Lister Quinones. 
got to get him the basketball. Right, Penny Hardaway says he is the hardest worker on the team. That called Ellis a perfectionist. He's working with him on the next to play the point mentality. Where it's a detriment to his yes. Game, where, yes. Where it's, you know, I make one mistake, and for the next three plays, I'm completely out of it because I'm worried about a turnover or a blown defensive assignment. As much talent as he has, obviously, you're not trying to make mistakes, but got to move on to the next play and keep playing. Timeout for Penny Hardaway and Memphis with 2.26 to go in the half. Well, Saturday, ABC has two massive games with college football playoff implications. First at noon Eastern, Penn State and Minnesota. Both teams 8 and 0. Oh. Who would have thought that that would be one of the games of the year in the Big Ten this season? But there, there they are, both unbeaten. Then at 7.30 Eastern, undefeated Clemson, the defending national champion, by the way, number five in the country, squares off against NC State. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app. Is, is Minnesota Penn State the biggest football game in Minnesota's history? I, I, think, I think you could make that I mean, argument. You could definitely make that argument. B.J. Fleck rowing the boat. He's got a new contract yeah. this week. Put those Florida State rumors to rest. There are a lot of rumors concerning Florida State <laughs> right about now. What's up, prime time? Uh, there's been a lot of rumors and news about James Wiseman this afternoon. The NCAA ruling him ineligible for impermissible benefits. They've got a temporary restraining order from a local judge, and that's why Wiseman is on the court. Found out a little over a half hour before tip-off that Wiseman would be in the game tonight. Here's his line so far. Again, at 18 years old, dealing with that, along with his coach, Penny Hardaway, who were in a courtroom just hours ago. Down low, Achua turned it over. Well, if you're Penny Hardaway, you obviously don't like the sloppy turnover there, but you love the ball movement. That's DJ Jeffries getting into the paint with the dribble, then finding his big guy, Precious Achua. And obviously, he wants him to score that basketball, but he loves the way his young guys are sharing the rock right now. 14 assists on 15 made field goals. A lot to Diggins, he couldn't finish it off. Look of disgust from the Memphis bench. A blown scouting report on the back screen. Bowen, and it tapped out of his hands by Jeffries, and it's out to Memphis. It's a nice out. recovery. I think it's fair to say Memphis is going to make mistakes because of their youth, but they are going to play hard. When you watch them on film and you see them in person, it's not for a lack of trying. It's more of a lack of knowledge, a lack of understanding how to be elite at the college level right now. And that will come. That will come as they get into the American Conference season. Right now, so raw as a team. And you talk about potential second weekend or national championship ceiling. Question mark is, do you need a veteran presence to do that as Achua sticks with the play and he puts it back in? We were Deep. talking about a veteran presence on a team. I, I think of the 2012 Kentucky National Championship team where they have Anthony Davis and they have Terrence Jones and Marcus Teague. But they had Darius Miller, and right. he was a guy that had been to the wars in Lexington. Oh, my oh Wiseman erasing another one. That might have been a goal 10, but that was so elite. Ellis, oh, it doesn't drop this time. And Wiseman is fouled. That was Ellis's first miss after six threes. We'll see right here. Was this ball going down? But where he caught this, it definitely was yeah, going down. Yeah, it was. Just his length and his vertical jumping ability, it is, there's not many guys that you've seen that can do the things that James Wiseman can do. By the way, new rule in the college game, if it was the final two minutes of regulation or overtime, exactly. they could have gone to the monitor to take a look at that. Can't do it now. Wiseman at the line. He was six of seven in the opener on Tuesday. Puts the second one home here. 45 to 16.
Wiggins looking inside. Jeffries with the deflection. Send a shoot. Now Jeffries with the steal. Tyler Harris pulling up. He knocks it down. The 11th three. Talk about an aggressive mindset. 14 on the game clock. Better make it. Tyler Harris showing that he can do just that. Bowen at the buzzer. No chance. Memphis so glad to have James Wiseman on the floor after all. And they are rolling against UIC 47 to 16 at the break. Well, coming up, guys in the studio, we'll look at the new coaches in the SEC. That and a lot more on the halftime report. Getting ready for the start of the second half here in Memphis as the 14th ranked Tigers hold a 47 to 16 lead over UIC and the college basketball world revolves around that guy you just saw James Wiseman Ted Emmerich along with the world champion Robbie Hummel here of course I just like saying that by the way you know he's coming at some point uh, but the story is James Wiseman and we're using phrases Robbie that you just don't expect to use in college basketball in November restraining order ruled ineligible in case you didn't hear it yes Wiseman ruled ineligible by the NCAA about an hour and a half before tip 37 minutes later thanks to a local judge a temporary restraining order was granted as the situation continues to develop it's been a crazy scene but Wiseman is playing tonight and playing well well he is playing well it's been the weirdest day that I can ever remember being a part of college athletics but James Wiseman has showed off just what kind of player he is and shown a little glimpse of what he can become right now now an elite rim protector. He has been everywhere for the Tigers. Five block shots, altering shots as well. You have to understand if you're UIC, even a head fake most times is not good enough with a guy of this caliber. However, showing off the skill set too. How about the pretty footwork right there and the jump shot? It's been an impressive day for James Wiseman thus far. The number one ranked freshman. Coming out of the class of 2019 by ESPN with four points, six rebounds, and five blocks. But the leading scorer for Memphis has been freshman guard Boogie Ellis. Well, it's been like NBA Jam. He steps on the floor absolutely feeling it. And you look at how deep these threes are. These are NBA three-pointers that Boogie Ellis has been sinking like they're nothing. They look like free throws coming out of his hand. He's got such a smooth stroke, but the ability to score the basketball once the former Duke commitment obviously had. He was known as a scorer in high school. He's shown us the range here tonight. Ellis, one of the five ESPN ranked players in the top recruiting class in the country for Memphis with 18 points, six of seven from three. So yes, run. he has outscored UIC by himself. Well, at UIC knew coming in that they were going to have a difficult time with the people they're missing. It, it's Marcus Adi, a guy who's a second team, all Horizon League caliber player. Tarkus Ferguson, a first teamer, and also the guy that led them in points, rebounds, assists, minutes, blocks, steals, and the list goes on. Jordan Blount out with an ACL. They hope to get him back in January. Rob Howard going to miss the, the entire season with a labor repair, but you have to think. Steve McClain told his team at halftime, we have to win the second half. And that's a good start right there. Unfortunately, for Braylon Bridges, just too much length at the rim. Lester Quinones hit two threes in the first half. This one doesn't fall. Damian Ball was out most of the first half with foul trouble. A high lob to James Wiseman, who is fouled underneath. Again, the NCAA ruled him ineligible earlier today. After initially saying that he would be eligible in May, this from a statement from the University of Memphis to clean a lot of this up. Of course, there was a standard review, and the NCAA reopened the case here recently, looking into Penny Hardaway, allegedly paying for the moving expenses. Wiseman and his family before his junior year of high school from Nashville to Memphis where he would play for Hardaway at East High School. This is before Hardaway became the head coach of the Memphis Tigers. It's just amazing. The NCAA is, is an entity that profits off of the best players playing. And yeah. right now, today is a day where you know, Chase Young's pretty good at Ohio State as a football player. He needed to be on the field. And he paid back the loan. It's right. just, it's mind-blowing, it's frustrating, 
You hope the times are changing, and you hope that the likeness deal is going to be something that can make college athletics better. But right now, our, our system is broken, and it's unfortunate to see kids continually paying the price. We talked about Sylvia as we see James Wiseman just manhandling the UIC defender, but Sylvia D'Souza, a guy who his guardian took money, and he's suspended for it, and initially was suspended for two years. It, it's just... Something needs to change, and I, and I hope that we are getting to a stage where that's coming sooner rather than later. Yeah, the hammer drops on players. Coaches, that's Ooh. a different story. How about Jacob Wiley dropping a hammer there? You're going to go to the rim on Memphis. You better go to dunk the basketball, and that's exactly what Jacob Wiley did right there. Impressive athlete. Going off the bounce, taking one over the top of James Wiseman. Funny, Steve McLean, UIC's head coach, has D. Brown, the former Illinois star, All-American on his staff. Brown was there's some play, there's shoot some, around. Yeah, and there's yeah. some players on the bench yes. for both these teams. Well, Boogie Ellis is a player. He scoops it home for Memphis, but Brown was stressing at shoot around. D. Brown, you better dunk that tonight. Yep. Otherwise, it's getting swatted into the third row. Well, you just you have to attack shot blockers with that aggressive mentality. And if you don't, you don't get to their chest or you don't try to put that thing down, turn it over. There's just no chance with the length and the athleticism that these bigs have. Wiseman was looking for a cutting Achua. Knocked out of bounds. It'll stay at this end. See right here, James Wiseman. Memphis loves this play where they set the down screen, allow him to duck in, and you see right there, just too much, too strong, and too long for UIC's defense. Eight points for Wiseman. And yet he has made such a difference as Ellis goes off the glass. For two more, he has made such a difference on the boards and, of course, cleaning things up on the interior with all the block shots. Well, your mindset when you go into the paint and you just understand that there is a 7-1 athlete protecting that paint, there's plays where you don't even have to block shots. You know, you're altering shots just by your reputation. And you've seen that tonight for UIC. Goodness, I hope Braylon Bridge is okay. Oh, a collision with the Chua. Memphis has the man advantage for a moment. Oh, man. And the officials really now spot Bridges, yes, who is cut. You see both guys just going for the basketball, trying to make a play, and mm. it's a three-man collision right there. Braylon Bridges getting the worst of that one. Braylon Bridges in his first year on the court with UIC from McDonough, Georgia, transfer from Northwest Florida State Junior College. And a nice ovation from the crowd here in Memphis. Bridges has had a rough night, both in the box score and now on the floor. Taking the worst part of that collision with Precious Achua. Robbie, how about Penny Hardaway's think, well, sneakers yeah, tonight? That's lost a story, in everything right? is Penny Hardaway's shoe game tonight is elite. You talked about Mike Miller's shiny ring. I'm blinded by Penny's shoes. He brings a different approach to coaching that, that resonates yeah. with, with younger players. You can see why guys want to play for him. Now the question was, could he really attract top recruits? Could he bring that buzz back to the Memphis program, make it nationally relevant again? He's done it just like that with this recruiting class. Yes, James Wiseman, okay, why Penny? Why Memphis instead of Kentucky? And Wiseman said it earlier in the summer, we're all trying to get to the NBA. And Penny was an NBA legend. He is developing me on and off the court. And no, we didn't grow up watching him. But you fall down the YouTube rabbit hole watching his highlights. That's what Wiseman was doing. Uh, here is the class in full, at least the five ESPN ranked players, four of them in the top 40. Wiseman, Achua, and Jeffries, all five star prospects. And Jeffries comes off the bench for Memphis. Oh, what a luxury that is for Penny Hardaway. A 
Well, Penny Hardaway said in May, yeah, okay, expectations, great. Pressure, yes, we want all of it. As he put it, we want all the smoke. It has become a phrase, a motto for this team, a hashtag even on their social media accounts. All the smoke. Yeah, I almost wonder if you want all the smoke, you got you have to deal with some fire. Yeah. Tonight team definitely <laughs> dealt with some fire. Yes. This afternoon. Some fire in the courtroom. And uh, by the way, that fire has not been extinguished. That will continue. The battle of James Wiseman in Memphis against the NCAA. That play right there is the perfect example of, of his influence in the lane. Gowan Bowen has a layup. In 95% in of the games, he's going to play in on that play. However, just the fact that he knows Wiseman's hanging back, he's got to make an extra pass, and UIC fortunate to keep possession on what should have been a layup. Jeffries with the strip. They couldn't hang on. Now Jeffries was the first player to commit in this historic class for Memphis. It came last October 2018 after he decommitted from Kentucky, the first player in the John Calipari era at Kentucky to decommit. And there's numerous reasons why that's been the case, whether that's facilities, reputation, getting guys to the NBA. However, it shows you the kind of belief that these high school kids have in Penny Hardaway, the belief that he can make me better and we can win big and I can get to the NBA from a non-traditional blue blood, from a team that plays in the American Conference, not one that plays at Rupp Arena or plays the Dean Dome or plays at Cameron Indoor Stadium. It's just been a different mindset for these kids. Bowen swallowed up by Wiseman. He takes a hard fall, and it's Memphis ball. And he respects Gowan Bowen's ideas to get to the rim here but you have to think when you draw a couple guys especially the guys that he is drawing there's got to be someone else that's open and there's got to be that next play that you make because at 5'11 180 it's going to be really tough to go over over the top of what Memphis is bringing right now and make sure the teeth are intact Wiley with the block on DJ Jeffries out of bounds Bowen still trying to adjust the teeth yeah, he's got all of them still. Wiseman fouled by Travell Washington. You know, there are people at home probably thinking, you've gone a whole half and then some, and you haven't talked about Lester Quinones' shorts. Here he is, number 11 in gray. Yeah, those got put on the back for about 5 o'clock tonight. <laughs> He's honestly, quietly, had a very good game. And not just making plays for himself. He's got six points. He's knocked down two threes. He's also got six assists. And you look at this Memphis team, it was Damian Ball on, on night one, doing it against South Carolina State with eight assists. And now Lester Quinones, a known shooter, making plays for others as well. There's a fun story in the Memphis commercial appeal today about Quinones and his shorts. His teammates all give him grief for it. But Quinones says, it's just my style. It's how I like it. Jeffries following up. Quinones took the contact. Basket counts. And a timeout for Memphis. They're a national title contender. Of course, Mike Miller, former Gator, now on the staff of Penny Hardaway and Memphis after a fruitful NBA career. And the Memphis Tigers think they're a national title contender as well, ranked number 14 in the preseason. And boosted by the news earlier this afternoon that James Wiseman, thanks to a temporary restraining order, would actually be allowed to play. That was not the case about an hour and a half before tip when the NCAA ruled him ineligible. A lot more to come on that story, but Wiseman back on the court with Memphis as they are in command against UIC. Ted, this, this can be where Memphis can get scary. Now, they're gonna give up a dunk here, but they have the length and the athletes to really affect games with the press, and they haven't had to tonight. They, they started this game out, they were on fire from the perimeter, and it hasn't been a game where they've needed to pressure UIC, but you have to think, 
could be a game changer for them down the line. DJ Jeffrey takes the three for Memphis. That's been the story tonight. 12 threes for the Tigers. But yeah, last year, Penny's first year again, a roster made of mostly Tubby Smith's players won 22 games. They forced 18 turnovers a game. They were top 10 in the country in pace. Well, and, and look at the bodies they have. Think about DJ Jeffries in the press. Think about James Wiseman on the backside cleaning everything up. He changed the game on both ends of the floor for you defensively. In the half court, you can be extra aggressive in the passing lanes because you know you got somebody back there that can erase everything. In the press, it's the same thing. You can be really aggressive knowing you're not going to give up layups. Three to shoot, and Bowen is fouled by freshman Damian Ball. That's Ball's third. And Steve McClain, UIC's head coach, said about Bowen, the only real scoring threat uh, on the team tonight because of all the injuries and the suspension also to Tarkus Ferguson. We just don't want him to do too much. I don't think he could do enough against Memphis tonight. You just, with the way Memphis started out shooting the basketball and the way that this game started, they got buzzsawed. And it's not entirely their fault. This is a team that's going to be very good in their league. They're going to compete at the top of the Horizon League, but they just don't have the personnel tonight. They're decimated by injuries and, and a suspension to their best player. You know, it's tough when you're going on the road and you're coming into a place like this. You're playing team of elite athletes it's gonna be a long night for you if you don't have your guys and they certainly don't have that tonight and McLean in his fifth season former assistant under Tom Crean at Indiana former head coach at Wyoming as well and a guy that if you play hoops in the Chicago land area you do it at a professional level I guarantee you you've played pickup at UIC's gym it's you've a place it, right? where in the summertime yeah, I, I have. We used to have great pickup games there. The Pargos, Etwan Moore, Doug McDermott, all the Bulls players would play. And he would let you come in and shoot. He'd let you come in and play. A lot of college coaches maybe won't do that, but doors at UIC were always open for pros. It, it was a really cool experience to get to play in those games. Edge him inside. Awfully persistent against Wiseman and Jeffries, but Jeffries clears it. Jeffries again from deep. No call there. Edgem lost his balance. UIC preseason pick third in the Horizon League. Coming off a 500 season a year ago at 16 and 16. Bow into the cup. Ball the rebound, couldn't hang on to it. A scramble. And it's Memphis ball with the arrow. Now, Damian Ball might be the hidden gem of this class. He's the, the one guy in the starting lineup who was not ranked in the ESPN 100. Well, still a four star. Yep, still, still a four star still prospect. A very good recruit, <laughs> yes. It was interesting listening to Penny Hardaway talk about him today and how the first time he really thought he could be a big time player in college was at, at his high school practice. They said he went back and saw him again and realized it wasn't a one off. This is the way he is. This is the way he plays. He sees things that a lot of high school players don't. And it was also interesting today to see how Memphis's coaches were trying to kind of rein him in defensively. They, they give him a lot of freedom. He's a very good defender, but he wants to gamble. I think which is perfect for the way that Memphis is going to play. Blocking foul is called. On Dion Edgem as Jeffries was on the attack. Now what Hardaway says about DJ Jeffries is right now he is at his best in transition. He's struggling a little bit in the half court. We've seen him knock down some shots uh, tonight. But 6'7 with a 6'10 wingspan. Long arms, Swiss Army knife kind of player. And Jeffrey said when he committed to Memphis, hey, 
Kenny told me I could play from the one to the three. Point guard to forward, he's that versatile. And he led him in scoring on their Bahamas trip this summer. Didn't have James Wiseman, who was out with an injury, and Precious Achua out for visa issues, but you can see that he can score the ball, he can facilitate, he defends. Swiss Army Knife, the perfect way to describe him, just as you did. I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, Ted, I'm here for you. <laughs> Doing a great job. I'll take any compliments from Robbie Hummel, the world champion. Three on Preface, three. Yeah, you better preface that. Yes. Three on three. There you uh, go. You're still a world champion. No one can take that from you. <laughs> Can't wait to see you in Tokyo next year. Yeah, I hope so. It'll be sweet. Tyler Harris, Memphis's top returning scorer from last year. He set the Memphis freshman record with 79 made threes a year ago. Well, he can be a game changer. He can spread the floor and give these big guys a ton of room to operate. We've seen Boogie Ellis shoot it. We know Le Lester Quinones can shoot it. But if he can make shots, just gives another guy that spreads that defense out. Be a huge game changer for Penny Hardaway. UIC just three of 17 from outside the arc. That was one thing they did well last year. Yeah, they really shot the ball well. They're missing two of their better shooters, but they made over nine a game last season. Ellis was looking for his seventh in and out. Oh, and the kick. Higgins had to recover it. Oh, falling out of control. Ellis the steal. Here we go. And Lomax finishes himself. Call him Alo. Lost his starting job as a freshman last season. Penny Hardaway said, hey, lost his way. He took the college game lightly. He has seen renewed focus from Lomax, who now comes off the bench. Well, it's just a different deal. Every, every time you step up a level and play, whether that's high school to college, college to the NBA, you got to be ready for what's coming. And sometimes I think guys just don't understand that it's going to be different at the next level. That's exactly what Alex Lomax found out last year. Memphis with the big lead here at FedEx Forum. I tell you, you talking about somebody who can do it all, it's him. Here in the Bluff City, two-time All-American with the Memphis Tigers, led Memphis State, as it was known back then, to the Elite Eight in 1992. And how about his deep roots, Robbie? Of course, born and raised, went to Treadwell High School, was National Player of the Year, or headed to Memphis. Still part owner of a barber shop here in Memphis, part owner of the Grizzlies. Also contributed to the Memphis Athletic Hall of Fame. Well, that's what makes this story, I think, so cool and it resonates with people is that Penny Hardaway has been the favorite son. He's played here. He's gone on to the NBA and done incredible things in a league where not many people are able to accomplish just that. Now he comes back. He's a high school coach gets the Memphis job and it's like, you know, finally he comes home and he's getting players that are like him. They're big time players out of the state of Tennessee. If you look at this roster and it reflects a lot of what he was. Of course, James Wiseman staying home, played for Penny a couple of years ago in his junior year at Memphis East. And again, to recap that story, ruled ineligible by the NCAA before the temporary restraining order. Hardaway's jersey hangs in the rafters here. Funny enough, that jersey now worn by his son, Jaden, uh, who is on the bench and contributed in the opener. We have not seen him uh, so far tonight. But those deep ties to Memphis also relate to the Wiseman case because the NCAA, in their initial ruling, deemed Hardaway a booster of Memphis because he has donated to the program, of course. I get Penny, he should have had a crystal ball. Himself, right. Gene, hey, I'm going to be the coach. One I should do this. Right, exactly. I mean, it's ridiculous. That's the key part of the timeline. Hardaway was not the Memphis coach at the time. He was the coach of Memphis East High School when he paid for James Wiseman and his family's moving expenses. There's still a lot to be sorted out there. 
Wiseman back in there. 8.7 rebounds and five block shots. The number one recruit in the country. Harris fouled on the three-point attempt. On Hardaway said it before the season. Basketball just touches this city. There is such a bond between the city of Memphis and the University of Memphis basketball program. He says, we give them peace and happiness. We know that they're starving for a winner at the national level. And you see how the crowd has turned out again tonight. They had 16,000 come out for the opener with all the buzz with this team. The attendance rose from 6,000 a game in Tubby Smith's final season to 14,000 a game last year in Penny's first season. Well, they, they were such a huge part of the city before the Grizzlies moved here from Vancouver, and they're the minor league baseball team that plays in Memphis, but it's just, this is the team. They are the main attraction on any given night in the winter here in Memphis, Tennessee, so it, it makes sense. They want to see a winner. The Grizzlies are in a rebuilding stage. They've got John Moran. They've got, they've got some pieces, but with Penny Hardaway coming back, I think people got excited that, hey, this is going to be like the Cal years and the years in the 80s when we were really good. And the last time Memphis made it to the second weekend of the NCAA tournament was 2009, John Calipari's yeah. final season before he left for Kentucky. Lost to UConn in the Elite Eight, I believe. Precious Achua on the move. And Achua is now in double figures with 10. that shot before clearing the rebound. You just see his presence, Jacob Wiley fading away from the rim. It's just such a tough shot, all because of his size and length. I'd love to see Memphis run Wiseman up right here, set a pick and roll, get him rolling to the rim. I think they heard you. Harris, seven to shoot. Jeffries. Foul will go against Memphis. You see just what kind of attention he draws. DJ Jeffries rages behind that pick and roll because Wiseman's dive takes so many defenders with him. He can manufacture offense without even touching the basketball. He had 28 points the other night, but he is having such an impact without the massive scoring game here tonight. Wiley missed the three. Dickens the offensive board. Shot clock resets to 20. And Taylor hits the three. Brian Taylor, the freshman from Detroit, playing a lot more minutes than Coach Steve McLean imagined. They're high on him. I think they think he has a chance to be a really good player here for them. He's been kind of forced into some playing time because of those injuries and the suspension, but we see a lot of upside in. So James Wiseman is at the line after the foul is called. Wiseman will shoot one and one. What a whirlwind it has been for the 18-year-old seven-footer number one recruit in the country and here's the statement from Memphis to recap what has happened this afternoon the NCAA ruled him ineligible he was going to be withheld from competition based on a rule interpretation earlier today talking about impermissible benefits that Penny Hardaway paid for his family's moving expenses from Nashville to Memphis before his junior year of high school however with the temporary restraining order issued today by the courts James participating in this game tonight and now in double figures with 10 points to go with nine rebounds and five block shots but again the key word there is temporary restraining order and all of 37 minutes of being suspended before yeah. that came down I mean it felt like a foul was called inside that'll go against Achua it's like the air went out of the building when that news dropped 
and around 4.45 local time, hour 15, hour and a half before tip. And 37 minutes later, there's a Memphis staff member who walks behind us pumping his fist. It was he so says, high. He said, he's playing tonight. <laughs> he was and sure, sure enough, we get the news buzzing on all our phones. He is back in the game. It was, it was just one of those deals where every time you would finally come to the realization, all right, Wiseman's not playing. It's incredibly disappointing because we want to see him play. Yeah, sure. All of a sudden, well, he is playing. All yeah. of a sudden, yep, he's starting. It, it was so bizarre. All of a sudden, he is coming out of the tunnel. And all of a sudden, he is knocking down the fadeaway jumper. He can do more than just block shots and run to the rim. There's a lot of skill in that package. How many teams can say they can switch ball screens five ways and feel incredibly comfortable doing that on the inside and out? Wiseman guarding guards and some of these Memphis guards guarding bigs. Can Jonas, oh, there's the chippy. Wiseman following up and the whistle blows. James Wiseman's toolbox. Well, the skill set has been on total display. Impressive with the turnaround jumper. Memphis rolling. UIC. Well, tonight after the Armed Forces Classic on ESPN and the ESPN app, stick around for Sports Center. Kenny Main and John Anderson will take a look at the encore performances of star freshman James Wiseman. Yep, right here in Memphis. Also, Cole Anthony with North Carolina. Plus, the Lakers gunning for a seventh straight win. And Trevor Maddich on Alabama's biggest advantage over LSU. It's all on ESPN and the ESPN app after the Armed Forces Classic at night Eastern. Well, James Wiseman, the number one recruit in the country, is at the line out of the timeout. A crazy day it has been for him on the court and in the courtroom. On the floor with a temporary restraining order. That's his case with the NCAA. They look to be resolved. Now, one thing Penny Hardaway told us earlier today, Robbie, was yes, you have star freshmen everywhere on the court, and especially in that starting lineup, five ranked guys. But James Wiseman is the centerpiece. Is everyone on the team cool with Wiseman getting all the attention? Are they okay with? Feeding him the ball again and again if it means they're going to win the game. Wiseman is the cornerstone. And I think the answer to that question is we'll see. Yeah. You know, through two games, we haven't seen enough to know. Guards love to score. And guards will always love to score. It, that's the problem with having traditional bigs is that they depend on having the guards throw them the basketball. And sometimes it's easier said than done. We talked about the lost art of entering the ball in the post. And sometimes... Those guards think it's better off for them to shoot. It's just a, a way the game is played now. So we will see, can they handle the fact that you have a player like a Shaquille O'Neal, like Penny Hardaway had, or a Hakeem Olajuwon, where he's going to get the accolades, probably regardless of what he does on the floor. Jacob Wiley, the nice oh. trip, and the dunk against Achua. Well done. Well, he took Steve McLean and Dee Brown's message to heart. If you're going to go to the rim, you better flush that thing. He turned it over, he saw Precious Achua, and he said, if I'm going to finish this, it's going to be with authority. Well, McLean said it at shoot-around today. He's got a long and athletic frame that you don't typically see in the Horizon League. You see Jacob on Wiley. Right. He's going to get the accolades. Able Probably to, regardless of what he did, his hands on that basketball, and it's showtime. Jacob Wiley taking off right over the top of Precious Achua. Wiseman right back at the line. Eight of 11 tonight after going six of seven Tuesday in the season opener. Again, the number one recruit in the class of 2019 and a little more than seven months from now could very well have his name called first in the 2020 NBA draft. Through two games, he's done nothing but validate the fact that you can see why he's looked at as the number one 
draft pick in next year's NBA draft. It's been an impressive start to the freshman season, showcasing a lot of different skills. Dickens from the elbow. Harris chasing it down. Wiseman. Oh, two more. The unselfish play tonight by Memphis has been incredibly impressive. You can tell they enjoy playing with one another, and they do not mind sharing the basketball. Multiple passes on that break, almost an overpass. You almost want to tell those guys, score the ball. Passing's great, but you overpass, you're going to turn that thing over. Max the bounce. Wiseman knocked down. Foul is called. It'll be on Jacob Wiley. See Tyler Harris able to get out in front and just the unselfish play there by Damian Bond and the ability to kind of slither your, your way through the defense by James Wiseman. The unselfishness impressive, but at times those close range passes can be dangerous. As a coach, you you don't want to stifle that, but you also want your guys to not mess around and score the basketball. Robbie, who knows how much more we'll see of Wiseman with that case yet to be resolved with the NCA. But what do you want to see more of from Wiseman now moving forward? I think being a quarterback at, at the back of the defense vocally, you know, you can really control things. I played with Kevin Garnett for for two months in a season, and while he was really injured. The way he could shut down pick and roll just by communicating, letting the guards know where it was coming from, who it was, what they needed to do to be successful in getting over that screen, it, it was the most impressive thing I've ever seen. So I, I think communication he can do a little bit better, and I think you also want to see him maybe demand the basketball a little more. When you're posting up, duck in hard, call for it, demand it from your teammates, which is easier said than done. When you're 18 years old and you're a freshman, that can be a challenge. You know, I, I, when I was a freshman, I, I'll never forget, Matt Painter told me, he said, you are playing selfishly. And I, and I looked at him like he was crazy. I was like, I pass, you know, I, I make the right play. I, I, what do you mean? And he said, you know what's going on on the floor and you don't tell anybody. And I was, I was like, okay, that's true. <laughs> uh, but at the end of the day, it resonated. I never wanted to be called a selfish player. And I don't think it was done with a selfish intent. But I could help my teammates, and I would like to see him do the same thing. How about the ovation here at FedEx Forum for Wiseman? Probably done for the night. Hopefully, for the sake of college basketball, not done Please. in the college game. Not done for the season. He is good for the game. We need him to be around. He brings a skill set that nobody else in the country can match. Lomax off the crossover. He shovels it in. Again, it was just so unusual at shoot around earlier today for James Wiseman. We, we saw him. He all of a sudden packed up his stuff. We thought he was going to class. Put on his sweats. <laughs> and first thing, we thought, does he have class? Is that why he's leaving early? We didn't get a straight answer from Memphis. It, we thought, okay, hopefully he's playing tonight. It, the first thing we're thinking well, of he's is been, he's the been a little injuries. banged up. That's right. All preseason. So Did, that, that didn't play in the exhibition games or with an ankle injury. Didn't play on the Bahamas trip with a shoulder injury. Played Tuesday night, but he didn't practice yesterday. Participated in shoot around until, like we said, suddenly he was gone. Then we get the news: 4:45 local time. He's ruled ineligible. 37 minutes later, oh, he's back in. And then two minutes after that, he's starting. Oh, he start, he's in the lineup. I mean, you can't even make this up. It, right. it has been the most bizarre night in college sports that I can remember. Blue Chips 2. <laughs> Might as well be. Penny Hardaway and James Wiseman. Nick Nolte coaching the team. Ah! Ellis. He had six threes in the first half. There's Taylor with another three for UIC. His third of the night. He gives good experience here. He's going to be a player for Steve McLean's ball club. I really look forward to seeing what UIC can be once they get all their guys back. This is not an indicator of what they are. Travel by Jeffries. James Wiseman, have a seat. You've done work tonight. State and no.
number six, Florida, from Gainesville. I love Scotty Lewis, one of the uh, top freshmen in the country, along with all the freshmen we're seeing from Memphis here tonight. He's coming off the bench for the Gators. Florida at number six, Memphis number 14. But here's a look at the top ten in the preseason AP poll. And we know there's already going to be a shakeup, Robbie, after what happened Tuesday night at the Champions Classic. Michigan State going down uh, to Kentucky. Tyrese Maxey was outstanding. Well, just his performance, and, and I was thinking today, who has been the most impressive freshman early on in the season? And, and obviously, we saw James Wiseman come out and have 28, uh, 11 rebounds, and also three blocks. But the fact that Tyrese Maxey did it at Madison Square Garden, he did it against the number one ranked team preseason in the country, and for a freshman to be able to step into that atmosphere, because Madison Square Garden is different. And when you've seen Madison Square Garden going, it is a special place to see a game, to play in a game, you know, whatever. But for a freshman who's never played in a college game to go out there and make some of the shots that he did, that is super impressive. He, he has to be, to me, the most impressive freshman that we've seen performance-wise thus far. Maxie had 26 points in that game. He has an energy that is just infectious. Well, no fear either. Yes. He, he plays the game not scared of anything. The moment. Elite players. You're going against Cassius Winston. That's that's one of the, the best players in college basketball this season. You're outshining him. That's saying something. What do you make of Cole Anthony so far and what he can become for North Carolina at 34 points, 11 rebounds against Notre Dame in the opener? Well, how impressive are 11 rebounds? Yeah. How many freshmen get 11 rebounds from the guard position in a college game? That, that doesn't happen. But to do it in a conference game on opening night, it's so bizarre that the ACC is playing conference games on opening right. night. But I'm all for matchups that bring two good teams together. So I, I think his poise and just his ability to make big shots. He, he made shot after shot that really pushed that lead out against Notre Dame. It was incredibly impressive. A guy that's got terrific pedigree, Greg Anthony. Yep. A great player in college and the NBA. Speaking of pedigree, you saw right there, Hardaway and Hardaway. Here he is, 25 in the gray for Memphis. Jaden Hardaway wearing his father's number who hangs in the Raptors. He gets some run here in the final minutes. Tyler Harris with the three. Hardaway actually had nine points in 11 minutes the other night against South Carolina State. In impressive fashion, too. Checked into the game and did like four good things immediately. You know, coach's kid, grown up around the game. Really cool to get to see him play for his dad. There's Godwin Bowen from the outside for UIC. Yep. And Penny says, hey, I'm harder on my son than anybody. He is going to be a great four-year player for us. Redshirt freshman. He finished up his prep career at IMG Academy in Florida. I mean, look who just subbed in for Memphis. Isaiah Maurice, who, who played some important minutes last year, especially in that NIT little run that they made, but also a guy in Ryan Boyce that we were talking about today. He had offers to go to a, some pretty good places yep. in college basketball and decided, I want to walk on another Memphis East product. But to see some of the guys that are checking in in so-called garbage time, his, his roster is loaded with talent. Junior College or ending up in Memphis. Jaden Hardaway off target, but Lomax cleans it up. Whistle blows, 142 to go. Memphis up 89 to 40. Well, statement was just released from the NCAA pertaining James Wiseman. From the NCAA, the University of Memphis was notified that James Wiseman is likely ineligible. The university chose to play him and ultimately is responsible for ensuring its student athletes are eligible to play. So there is the response from the NCAA after the temporary restraining order late in the afternoon allowed Wiseman to be on the court tonight. 
it's going to be an interesting couple weeks. It, this story is going to unfold. And it, it appears that you have the University of Memphis and the NCAA that both want to play hardball. So we'll, we think will, dug in? We will see where, this, where the chips fall when this is over. But at the end of the day, you just want to see kids eligible. You want to see kids playing. That's what the NCAA is about. And, it, and unfortunately, it seems like there's a lot of decisions where it's the waiver process or, or the ineligibility process that just do not make sense. And again, it was about something that happened two years ago before Hardaway was even the coach at Memphis. One minute. As James Wiseman played for the University of Memphis for the final time. It's a question you have to ask. 17 points, nine rebounds tonight. The number one recruit in the country. And his future hangs in the balance with this case against the NCAA. We don't know what is going to come from this in the next couple weeks, but one thing I do know is that he's shown everybody that his NBA stock is for real. Oh. I mean, it doesn't matter if he plays another game. He, he will be the first or second pick in next year's NBA draft because that's the type of talent and the type of physical specimen that he is. It would just be a shame if this was it. Absolutely. It would be a crying shame. Because you know, a lot of these elite talents, we don't get to see them a whole, you know, for a year. We get them for a year, and soon it could change to where we don't get them at all. Yeah. And they go right to the NBA, which would honestly be better. If you don't want to go to school, you shouldn't have to. That's a story for another day. Right. Uh, and it seems like that's coming, by the right. way, Robbie. Uh, we, I, I we've all seen the headlines. Right. That's coming right. in a couple of years. But when you have them, it's like, man, for this year, like, like, with Zion Williams last year, how enjoyable was that? Yes. Or Trey Young the year before. Right. You know, celebrate the stars of our game. Right. Yeah, that's not always the way that it goes down. And no, Wiseman does not have that Zion mania type effect, but still the number one recruit in the country. See what Cole Anthony's doing. That, that star power is so important at this level. Sure. And especially when it's just for one season. Well, with Zion, he, he was, I don't want to say a generational player, because I think LeBron James was equally as athletic as, as Zion, but just the flair that Zion Williamson plays with and dunks with, he, he was so unique. And James Wiseman is a different kind of unique, but still incredibly fun to watch play the game. How many guys have you said, man, he runs like David Robinson? Yeah. That's a compliment you don't give to too many people. And James Wiseman has been a guy that has been compared to Chris Bosh. He's been compared to David Robinson. As we said, you see the shot blocking ability, the ability to alter the game on defense, the fact that he can duck in, he can finish with authority. He's got a skill set. He can make jump shots. He can make left jump hooks. He's got a little bit of a fadeaway jumper over that left shoulder. But it would just be a shame if he didn't play anymore this season in college basketball. 17 points, nine rebounds, and five blocks. And again, the NCAA during this game releasing a statement that Memphis was notified that Wiseman is likely ineligible. The university chose to play him, and they are ultimately responsible for ensuring that student athletes are eligible to play. Essentially, it's on you, Memphis, despite this temporary restraining order. And we'll see where it goes from here. Wiseman committed to Memphis last November. It was seriously the program's biggest victory since probably the Final Four in 08. Yeah. They beat UCLA in the semis, play Kansas, of uh, course with Derrick Rose on that team, going up against Mario Chalmers in Kansas, then San Antonio. And hopefully for Memphis and for Wiseman, this isn't it. But for now, they can celebrate a blowout victory over UIC. 92-46 the final. Much more to come from Memphis after this.